ਨਿਸ਼ਕਾਮ ਟੀਵੀ ਨਿਸ਼ਕਾਮ ਟੀਵੀ ਦੇਖਣ ਵਾਲੇ ਸਾਡੇ ਸਾਰੇ ਸਰੋਤਿਆਂ ਨੂੰ ਪਿਆਰ ਭਰੀ ਸਤਿ ਸ਼੍ਰੀ ਅਕਾਲ ਟੁਡੇ ਇਜ਼ ਅ ਵੈਰੀ ਐਕਸਾਈਟਿੰਗ ਡੇ ਫॉर ਆਲ ਆਫ ਅਸ ਹੀਅਰ ਬਿਕਾਜ਼ ਵੀ ਹੈਵ ਅ ਸਪੈਸ਼ਲ ਗੈਸਟ ਵਿਦ ਅਸ ਐਂਡ ਥਿਸ ਗੈਸਟ ਡਜ਼ਨਟ ਨੀਡ ਐਨੀ ਇੰਟਰੋਡਕਸ਼ਨ ਸੋ ਆਪਾਂ ਜਦੋਂ ਵੀ ਗੱਲ ਕਰਦੇ ਹਾਂ ਨਿਸ਼ਕਾਮ ਸੇਵਾ ਦੀ ਸੈਲਫਲੈਸ ਸਰਵਿਸ ਔਰ ਏਡ his name and his organization's name always appears at the top this year his organization is nominated for nobel peace prize i'm sure you must have guessed by now so before we talk to him uh, let's watch a short video recognizing his work So without further ado let me introduce you to my role model and role model to a lot of us Sadar Ravi Singh Khalsa ji Why do you call Sadar Ravi Singh Fateh ji Why do you call Khalsa Why do you Fateh ji Welcome to the show ji Thank you thank you And uh we have with us another uh, special guest uh she is a volunteer at uh, Khalsa Aid USA uh let's welcome amrit pal kar uh welcome to the show amrit pal bhai guchi ka khalsa bhai guchi ki fateh bhai ji ka khalsa bhai ji fateh so today we have a uh, five team leads from nishkam tv who would like to know more about uh, khalsa aid and like to ask few questions to you vg and uh, to you amrit pal uh but before that i would like to give a brief introduction to nishkam tv for those who are not aware So Nishkam TV is a non-profit organization uh, based out of uh, New England Sikh Study Circle Gurdwara Sahib in Westboro Massachusetts USA So Nishkam TV was uh, started back in 2019 June so we are year and a half old The thought process behind Nishkam TV was how do we supplement Khalsa school education with the visual media uh most of our gurdwaras uh, have a khalsa school kids go there and learn uh, gurmukh sangeet uh, gurmukhi uh, about our rich sikh history so how do we take that content and make uh, documentaries or narrative short films or do interview with the sikh scholars so we can capture these content uh, as multimedia or, or visual media because as we know uh, the pedagogical approach to learning has moved to youtube videos kids learn much faster watching any how to do video on youtube and uh, i've talked to a lot of kids who would like to be youtubers so we thought let's put those skills together and uh, uh, train them in uh, tools which can help them produce these programs uh, much faster and quickly and we decided pretty early uh, we need to uh, the organization structure of nishkam tv should be created in a in a way so kids can try different skill sets i believe every kid is a genius but it is our responsibility to find that genius in them we need to give them right environment a right platform where they can explore their different skill set uh, and then they can decide yeah i'm really passionate about doing this versus this so we have seven teams and these seven teams uh 
are pretty much based upon a life cycle of a TV production or, or, or any movie. So there are three big stages of a filmmaking. There's a pre-production, production, and post-production, which uh, incorporate a different aspect of a filmmaking. So we have seven teams, content writing, team responsible for writing scripts, writing concepts, and, uh, and uh, working on the ideas which can be made into like a, a, like a TV series or, or a series of other programs. Uh, then we have a talent team. This team is responsible for hosting programs, hosting interviews. So these are kids who are interested uh, in the acting uh, component of a TV or for film production. Then we have a production team. Uh, production team is responsible for cameras, for lighting, for sound. And once the program is done, they're also responsible for video editing. And it's very important when you have a great program, how do you distribute it? Make sure it reaches to your target audience. So we have a marketing team responsible for establishing the relationship with other organizations who's doing great work like Halside. And we have a social media team and outreach team so they can distribute our content. And then we have a, a website and a newsletter team. And then the seventh team is our design team. So these are our seven teams working on uh, seven uh, different aspects of life cycle of any film program. And the kids can uh, choose one team and then they can move it around if they think they are passionate for some other skill. Uh, by numbers, uh, Nishkan TV today has 57 students, uh, part of uh, different teams. Each team has a team lead and then there's a vice lead. So we have a leadership bench and then there are team members we have uh, each team is uh, attached with their two team advisors. So these are our parents, uh, our Sangat team members who are doing this seva. So they are sort of a adult supervision so they can help kids with, uh, uh, if they're blocked with any issues or problems so they can help them. We have a 10 member advisory board, uh, prominent members from our Sikh community who's always helping and advising us about different aspects we should bring uh, to this organization. So we're very thankful uh, uh, to have uh, these people mentoring and coaching us. And then uh, we have uh, youth reps. Uh, youth reps are our kids who graduated from school, now they're in college. So they can be a bridge between our Khalsa school kids and, and the world. So this is how our team is organized and we use all uh, a, a collaboration tools. We are very thankful to Microsoft for giving us uh, free licenses so we can uh, use SharePoint portal to collaborate. Every kid has their own personal email with the nishkam.tv domain. And then we use a lot of internal to Microsoft Teams for collaboration, video calls. So this is a brief introduction of Nishkam TV. Very excited to work with these kids. Uh, so now I would like to introduce you to our first uh, team lead, uh, Kiran Bagga. Kiran uh, leads our talent team and uh, she and her team has done an, an amazing job interviewing a lot of uh, sick personalities in the US. And uh, she's also grooming other kids, part of the talent team. So Kiran, why don't you go introduce uh, your team and then please go ahead with your question. All right, um, so as you call, I'm just going to introduce myself really quickly. So yeah, my name is Karen. I'm 15 and I'm oh. a team lead. So basically, that's just what you see on camera and a little bit of planning. I was drawn to this position because I am passionate about public speaking. And I do share, try to share that through Nishkam TV and also by teaching public speaking classes at our Gurdwara, which are attended by younger Nishkam TV members. So like children as young as eight. And as a part of this program, I've been able to meet a lot of prominent SIG members like Ravi Bella, Gurbir Grewal, and Will Hughes. So um, just for the question, I was wondering with this pandemic, you've been doing a lot of work, especially in the UK, <laughs> so from the NHS to food banks to lorries, how has Khalsa Aid continued <clears throat> with the presence of COVID-19 to help alleviate the uh, pressures <clears throat> that were caused by the virus? Yeah, hi, uh, Sasri Kalkiran. It's amazing um, that, you know, you're into public speaking and, and teaching others because I'm a big believer that people shouldn't be afraid to 
speak. I see a lot of people doing good work, but when you say you want to talk in public, go, <gasps> nee, 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 I can't do that. I can't. It's like, you know, it's the passion. If you do something with passion, you don't need to be worried about it because it's coming from within. So it's very important that people can express themselves and the passion. So it's great what you're doing, it's especially the confidence. And we need more young women like yourselves and young men to go forward and, and be confident on stage and, you know, portray the message across and be, um, be very um, um, expressive. So I'm glad that you, you're coming across confident, expressive and, and very strong and confident. That's really good. So the question is COVID, yeah, COVID-19, the USA team, Canadian teams, they have been really busy uh, helping, especially the Canada team had a huge task. We, there are so many international students. They've been uh, providing international support to the international students who came from India or other parts of the world who were stranded, uh, they, they lost their jobs, uh, didn't, couldn't go to uh, colleges, no income. So they've been providing food parcels uh, on a huge scale across the country. Uh, Australia as well, huge, huge number of international students. And Australians uh, were funded from the UK. So from the UK, we are providing uh, support to the international students and indig indigenous communities in Australia. Uh, during the pandemic, we were supporting international students in two Russian cities, St. Petersburg and Moscow. We're providing international student support in Cyprus, in Ukraine, and, uh, and food parcels uh, in Peru, uh, and food parcels for day laborers uh, in, um, in uh, Africa, in Kenya, as well, as well as refugees in Iraq and other parts of the Middle East. And the UK, we got a huge program providing uh, support for the vulnerable and the homeless. And here also, we work with the local governments to provide support for people who have mental health issues, who didn't get care workers during COVID. So it was, it was a huge amount of work during COVID. It, it was a, I think uh, we probably spent about five, six hundred thousand US dollars, maybe more, on COVID relief from the UK alone. And but in in North America, Australia, Canada, especially, a lot of the local Sikh businesses were the key. They donated materials, they donated uh, places to distribute, make distribu distribution centers. But everything we've done all became possible because of the volunteers. So in all that, the key are the volunteers. The volunteers are real heroes that continued the work. All right. Well, thank you so much. That's really amazing work. Thank you. And keep going. Thank you. Thanks, Karen. Uh, thanks, VG. So moving to our next team, a very important team, as they say, everything starts with content. Uh, content is the king. Uh, Gurleen, uh, she's a team lead for our content team. Uh, they have, again, done an amazing job writing programs across different genres, like interfaith uh, or about environment. They also produced a series of videos on Safe Afghan 6. So, Gurleen Beda, why don't you go ahead, introduce your team, and then please ask your question. Sitsrikal Ravankal, my name is Gur My name is Gurleen Carr, and I'm 16 years old, and I'm the content team lead. So, what drew me to this role is that I've always been a person, I've been very research, uh, interested in research. And when I heard about this position, Harwankal, I'm a bit <laughs> notorious for researching a bit too much everything. So Harbo Uncle said, I think this would be a good job for you. So I took it. So uh, what we do is that we research different uh, programs that we use, but we then will make scripts for those programs and then we'll give them to the production team to produce. So I know you've probably been asked this question a lot of times, but what inspired you to found Casa Aid? Yeah, hi, Galeen. That's a wonderful of being contents, involved in the contents. And uh, if you see my social media, content is very important. No matter how good someone can present a project or an idea, content is, especially on social media, is very important. So well done. That's really good. And for your age, it's so such a mature uh, topic that you're talking about. It, it really makes me happy that there are individuals like yourself, young people, who are researching 
and uh, using the content the right way. So first of all, uh, um, well done. CalSight basically was formed in 99 uh, when we we're celebrating 300 years of the Khalsa. So the idea behind it was two or three things. One was we should take the langar waste needed. At the, at the time, we're taking langar only in the Gurdwaras and wasn't really reaching the people who are hungry or refugees around the world. Uh, secondly, the Sikhs, uh, after 1984, were maligned. Uh, especially the word Khalsa was was made to feel like it's not a clean word, it's a dirty word, it's, it's con connected with terrorism. So we wanted to say, no, Khalsa is, Khalsa is the ultimate humanitarian. If you look at the concept of the Khalsa, Deg, Deg, Fateh, Miri, Piri, all that, we are the ultimate humanitarian. So we wanted to give something to the world. We always say to the world, we don't get justice, we, we want this, we want that, but we never given, which is a simple thing which is the concept of seva. So all we've done is taken the message of Langur and Sarvatapala onto the global scale. So that was the message. That's the idea behind Carl Said is, uh, is not to invent something new, but just take it to the global level. So Gurdwara seva from the Gurdwara to the refugee camps. Thanks, Vijit. Uh, thanks, Pauline Bita. So moving to our next team. This is Manish Kandesi pen is mightier than sword the aj de yug de vich je keha jaye camera is mightier than everything uh, i think it won't be wrong because we know what is happening in the world through the lens of a camera a uh, camera person is at the site of the news event and that's how we look at things how we perceive things so whatever they show us uh, we we see it so this team, uh, our production team, is responsible for managing camera work, for managing lighting, sound, and once the program is ready, they're also responsible for video editing. So introducing a team lead for our production team, Ronak Singh Mocha. So Ronak, why don't you uh, introduce your team and go ahead with your question. Vaigu Ji Ka Khalsa, Vaigu Ji Ki Fateh Ankur. My name is Ranik Singh Mocha. I'm 17 years old and I'm the production team lead. We handle all the aspects of filming, editing, and weekly Kirtan live stream programs. I have 10 members in my team from age 10 to 17. We have a self-made soundproof studio in our Gurdwara, first of its kind. I produced many programs before, such as the virtual Gurpur of Devan in collaboration with our Khalsa school during this pandemic. But I'm most grateful for producing this one with you in it, as you have shown us how to put in practice the Guru's teachings. So my question for you is, we all know that you're busy traveling doing aid work globally, so how do you balance your personal life with professional work, or how do you balance home issues with international issues as an organization? Yeah, hi, uh, Veronica. First of all, well done. It's fantastic. Um, you know, the more I meet you guys, young guys, the more talented uh, and inspired the talent you have, I'm inspired by. It's amazing what you're doing at such a young age. So every new person I meet today on your, in your group is inspiring. So well done. But yeah, I mean, um, uh, you know, it's when you, when you, when you, there's two things. One, you, when you do say about work for organization, there's limits to it. When you actually started an organization, it becomes like a, like an obsession. It's a, it's your, it's your project, your baby, and, and you know, there's no switching off. It's not 95. I think one thing you can forget is 95. It's 24 7. I get messages, calls, issues around the world, whatever it is. It's non stop. I wish it was sometimes just a job I can do at nine o'clock, switch over five o'clock. There is, there is no, you know, the balance finds itself. If you want to, because, you know, Sikhs wanted an institution uh, for, to represent them around the world. And Carl Said is, isn't just an organization, it's become an institution, like a movement now around the globe. So uh, to do that, you have to find the sort of like the balance thinking, okay, either I do carry on with this with the passion or I start choosing the home life. So it's, it's always been Carl Said last 21 years, the, the passion, the determination and everyone around you supports you and the family uh, because it becomes I think um, um, 
the passion is so much that you're always looking for uh, new ways to uh, do new projects, reach out new new uh, places in the globe that need you. And then there's so many issues that link to it. I mean, hundreds of issues from people working around the world to local issues to politics. So there is no switch off. There's not really, you can never really find a perfect balance. All you can do is try to relax a little bit. And uh, for me, re relaxation is watching a nice horror movie. I'm a zombie movie fan. So if you got a good zombie movie, I'll be around to watch it. Thank you. So, Vijay, uh, now I know uh, what I'm uh, doing uh, this Saturday evening, watching a good zombie movie. Uh, this is very inspirational. Uh, again, uh, we are all inspired by the work Carl Said is doing. And uh, I typically tell kids about grit, about persistence, that things can't be successful overnight. You need to work. Uh, you need to do a hard work to uh, to work on any project, on, on anything which you are determined uh, to solve. And I'm sure Carl Said, when it started back in 99, there have been ups and their downs, but you guys have been consistently working on your passion, on your on mission. So I think uh, uh, what you uh, just uh, uh, shared with us is very inspirational. Thank you very much. So now uh, moving to our next team. Uh, Hindi uh, jungle mein mor nacha kisne dekha? BJ jungle ch mor nachya hai, So that's true for uh, media also. If you have a great film, if you have a great documentary, je thwadi oh documentary uh, distribute ni ho ri, uh, it's not reaching out to the wider audience. So we need to make sure the great content our kids are producing, those contents can be uh, sent or distributed uh, to the target audience. I would like to introduce team lead for our marketing team, Harneet Kaur. So Harneet Beta, why don't you take it from here and ask your question? So Shri Kaur, Ravinder, Uncle. My name is Harneet Kaur. I'm 19 years old and I'm the team lead for marketing. And I'm also currently majoring in marketing at the University of Massachusetts Amherst. And so in the marketing team, we reach out for sponsorships and also spread the word about um, various like uh, programs produced by our channel. And also in the newsletter team, we are currently on our 10th edition and featuring Kalsa Aid as our sick organizations in America section and I've also been writing the article about Call Said and I've learned so much about the organization and so thank you so much for all the wonderful work that you do in the organization and so for my question there's a lot going on with the farmers protest in India so what inspired Call Said to get involved in the farmers protest and what role has Call Said played in the protest? Uh, first of all uh, well done for what you're doing uh, marketing is one thing we're always looking to expand on. So maybe we'll offer you a job soon. That's fantastic. <laughs> That's a really wonderful to see that you're researching, you've done uh, your majors in it. It's, it's a major and it's really, really uh, good that you're uh, uh, focused in marketing. We need more people like that. We don't have enough. We have a lot of dentists and doctors but not in, uh, good people in marketing. So well done. That's, that's fantastic. Um, farmers, farmers, why we're passionate about farmers projects. We're all farmers, most of us. I think if I talk to most of the Punjabi community, Sikh and non-Sikh, somewhere along the line, we have a farming link. So uh, it's, it's important now to understand what the giant corporations, uh, what they're trying to do uh, through corrupt politicians, basically buying the politicians to suit them to create uh, a monopoly uh, type situation in the market where one or two businesses will control everything eventually, which is very, very dangerous. And it's not just the farmers today that will be affected or the next generation, but all the smaller communities, about 70% of rural communities around the India will be devastated by this, uh, by these new laws and uh, grabbed by the corporations. So we are making a stand for those 70% small landholders. Uh, it could be there could be Sikhs from Punjab. It could be Hindus. Could be Muslims. 
it makes no difference. It's a humanitarian issue. Uh, if we don't make a stand for the farmers who actually feed humanity, then what's the point of us, us Carl side being around? So yes, it's all our duty to make a stand for the farmers who are, you can see, are staying two months in the freezing cold. Almost 200 have died uh, protesting. Uh, many have been jailed. Um, and they're all because they want to preserve their way of life and make sure that we're not uh, controlled by one or two massive corporations in the future. So yeah, it, it is because we are Punjabi and farming is in our genes and farming is a way of life. We've been, in, in, we've been enriched by uh, such agricultural practices for so long that it, to walk away from these farmers would be a total betrayal to, uh, to who we are and to our history and to ancestors. So it's, it's, this is not a Sikh versus Hindu or Punjab versus the government issue. This is a farmers versus the government issue, any farmer from across India. No, that's great. Uh, uh, thanks, Riji. Thanks, Sarnit Beda. Uh, so I think that of keeping that in mind, since uh, we live in the Western countries, so we can bring a very unique perspective to farmers' bills and farmers' protests. So we have worked with uh, Nishkam TV team to produce a series of different videos. So they have uh, created a 10 part series called uh, 10 facts to know about farmers protest. And these are very small one to two minute uh, TikTok kind of a videos. And then they have created uh, six videos in six different languages. They've created video in French, English, Hindi, Punjabi, Gujarati, and Marathi to talk about farmers protest. And uh, we will provide a link in the description. Okay, uh, moving to the last but not the least, uh, social media and outreach team. This team is responsible for putting us all together today. So, so Meher Khanna, she's a team lead for our social media team. Uh, she very persistently wrote to Khalsaid through Twitter, through Instagram, and then Khalsaid Canada responded to her email and then they forwarded it to uh, Carl said USA, uh, it, it went to Amrit Paul and Amrit Paul reached out to me. So I will say uh, uh, Meher is responsible for this interview. So thanks Meher Beta. So why don't you take it from here, introduce your team, the work you are doing and uh, please go ahead with your question. Satsurkam Ravi Amko, my name is Meher Korkanna. I'm 17 and I'm the social media team lead here at Nishkam TV. Um, as social media team lead, I do a lot of posting and publicizing across our various different social media platforms. I also network and form connections with different organizations and people like yourself um, in order to grow our Nishkam TV community. I've always really been interested in social media because I truly believe it's the tool of the future. You know, it's so important in educating and spreading awareness now more than ever before. And I really admire how Casa Aid has been able to transform from a grassroots type of organization into like the physical embodiment of Seva and has been an inspiration for so many Sikhs across the globe. And I'm sure along the way you have faced different scrutinies and different controversies from sources, namely the Indian media. So being part of social media, I was wondering how have you been combating the spread of fake news through your own publicity. Yeah, hi, sorry, what was your name again? Meher. Meher. Yeah, it's good to uh, talk to you. Social media is one of my favorite uh, uh, areas because several years ago, we were blocked by our own Sikh media in the UK purely because they think cars are too successful and jealousy crept in, which it does in the Punjabi community, unfortunately. So we turned to social media and we, about seven, eight years ago, we started strengthening the social media and you can see today Carl Said's social media is very strong because we mm -hmm. continuously engaging, posting um, and now you're talking about like taking on the fake news. I think the best thing to do is we don't have time to sit down and go through everything to research uh, who's fake or not. The best way to combat any of this negativity, propaganda or fake news is to keep posting about the good stuff, what you're doing. Also, like if you if you see some of my uh, posts, uh, I talk about other organisations who are doing a good job. 
normally in the Sikh community, we don't like to promote each other's organizations. For me, it's the opposite. If somebody's doing a good job, you promote them. So the best way to overcome any negativity, propaganda, fake news, is post about the good stuff. Post about the seva, post about positivity. The, the more people post there, the more, and, and especially on Twitter and Instagram, the correct hashtags, like uh, uh, for the last month or six weeks, I've been really, really pushing with people saying, look, please, whatever hashtag you use, always use hashtag farmers protest for the mm -hmm. farmers protest in India. So you could put another hashtag like we stand with farmers, we support farmers, but one hashtag that stands all the time is we, is hashtag farmers with an S, farmers protest. Now, if you go to Twitter, when you type it, sometimes there are people who are trying to divert it. They'll put it as farmers protest, like P-R-O-S, trying to divert you. So when you're posting, be careful that you get the right hashtag. So when you're promoting over fake news, if you look at Rihanna's uh, tweet and Greta's tweet, all these people from abroad uh, posting in support of the farmers, most of them are using the hashtag farmers protest. So all the fake news that was coming out from right-wing Indian groups got drowned. And then the Indian government wanted to ban that, pro that hashtag from Twitter India saying, can you block that hashtag? One hashtag became very positive in fighting fake news. So instead of us worried about the fake news, we created something positive. And then the whole global level, the world picked it up. And they've been now using that. So sometimes one little thing like a hashtag or the good vibes or positivity picks up and then you don't need to worry about fake news because you're not only posting about yourself but you're posting about other people who are, who are doing good jobs so that's my message to anybody using social media let's just let's not just focus on one or two organizations if some other organizations are good doing a good job too you can retweet them you can post about them and use the correct hashtag. The more of you guys use the hashtags, which promotes good work, the less likely the fake news or negative news will come up in the trending areas. So yeah, so keep up what you're doing. Social media is brilliant. And I'm glad that you understand what's fake news, you understand the propaganda side, and you're tackling it. And you're teaching others as well. So really good job. That's fantastic. That's a, like I said, social media, one of my favorite things so well done keep it up if there's anything we can do just to you know reach out and if there's anything you want us to share then tag us in tag on especially twitter i'm a big twitter fan so are you on twitter yeah we're on twitter instagram yeah um, so when you're on twitter <laughs> sometimes once a month once a week whatever just tag me in sometimes i got so many tags yeah. I, I can't see it but i will eventually pick up or you can message me as well say look we're doing this tweet can you promote it? And I'll be happy to do it. That's how you fight fake news by uniting. Once you're united, nobody can beat you. So we're here. If anything you want us promoted to help your account, just tag me in and I will retweet it. Thank you. So well That's done. so nice of you. <laughs> So Meher, uh, today is your lucky day. Now you have access to Virgis Network, so you can uh, tag uh, your post and uh, he can help you promote it. And VG uh, social media team has really done an amazing job uh, managing our uh, Facebook channel, Instagram, Twitter. Uh, we recently started our TikTok channel and that's where we put in all our uh, farmers builds one to two minute videos. So, so amazing work. And now with your help, your support and with your blessings, I'm sure they're gonna do great. They're gonna do great. And thank you, VG. I really appreciate your time. Uh, but uh, uh, at some point of time, uh, we would like to sit with you, maybe uh, spend a day with you and call our program uh, a day with uh, Ravi Singh Khalsa. Yeah, I'll come over. One oh, day when everything is calmed down with COVID, we'll fly over. So yeah. whenever you are in America uh, next time, we would like to meet in person and do this interview. And, and one more thing, Virji, I would like to acknowledge uh, a few folks uh, without whom this Nishkam TV wouldn't have been possible. And these people have given us their unconditional support. They have always advised us. And if we have reached to this level today and we are sitting across you doing an interview, I think a big, uh, big thank you, uh, 
goes to them. So I would like to acknowledge a few folks. And these folks have been working on our Khalsa school and for our Gurdwara South for the last 20 years. And they have been my biggest supporters. So so thank you, uh, Harinder Soyanvir ji. Uh, thank you, Kavaljit Mokhavir ji. Thank you, Amandeep. Uh, thank you, Malkit Gelvir ji. Thank you, Baljit Nijavir ji and Dr. Amanpreet Sani. So these people have supported us all through this journey and whatever we are able to accomplish today is because of these folks. There are a lot of folks who helped, but uh, these are the six uh, individuals who I worked very closely during uh, the early days. So thank you very much. And and one more piece of information, uh, Virji, uh, our Gurdwara Saab New England Six Study Circle and Nishkam TV, we have raised funds for Khalside for uh, for farmers protest happening in India. So we can talk to you offline. How do we uh, send these funds to India? Or there was a one thought process because the team was very impressed with the work Kisan Mall is doing. So either we can send supplies or we can replenish inventory. So so we can uh, talk to you guys. Then, yeah, um, Amrit, the, the USA representative can help you on that. But but we're not we're not funding anything from outside the farmers protest. Uh, India team is looking after it. They have enough funding coming from internally. But what we are doing, any funds collected, if you wanted to do something, you could hear anybody funding, fundraising your car side and you say, look, I want to help the farmers. If you make a deposit, please write on the back of the check or the reference for Punjab farmers. Gee. Not to protest. We're not fundraising for protest, mm -hmm. but Punjab farmers. Then we will make sure that money only goes to farming projects in Punjab. So the reference in banking or back of the check must be Punjab farmers. Yeah, we'll touch base with Amrit Pal uh, and then we'll go from there. Uh, no, I just want to say it's uh, amazing how talented the young guys are. And uh, I'm quite impressed. I think, I think I'm going to fire all the HQ team and get your guys over into the office. <laughs> it's amazing what they're doing. I'm, I'm, uh, I'm taking notes, by the way. Look, I've written some of the notes here. Um, some of the guys are so talented, it's, uh, it's really good. And we got to encourage uh, people, the young people in our community to, to flourish and grow. So I think I want to talk to Amrit, uh, our US representative, after I've spoken to you, to see how we can more encourage and help the young people you're uh, uh, nurturing to the next steps with your guys, with what you're doing to support you do that. And I think it's great, it's, it's wonderful that you are, you have this inspired young people you inspired me today it's really good thank you it's, uh, it, it was um, really really enlightening i'm very uh, touched by the the dedication and and the skill set of the youngsters amazing skill set for such a young age so well done to all it's a great achievement i'm glad i, I could come along and have a chat with them because they really boosted us Thank you very much, VG. Uh, coming from you, that means a lot to me personally, and I'm sure to everybody uh, involved with Nishkam TV. Thank you very much, uh, these words of encouragement. And uh, we would like to uh, collaborate with uh, Khal Saeed uh, for more projects in the future. Uh, we have a lot of other ideas which we'd like to explore with you, maybe when we meet next. But some of the things, uh, when kids have a summer vacation, instead of just going out and interning at maybe Dunkin' Donuts or Starbucks, if we can give them a stipend and they can work on some of the projects they're really passionate about. So some of the things I would like to explore with you, uh, and then again, uh, you coming on this show, that uh, it has really boosted our confidence because Reiteration of the fact like we are on the right path, uh, we are making a difference and getting that reiteration from, from you who have been doing Seva from last 20 years, that means a lot. So I think, uh, as I said before, this is a special day for us. Uh, you have really made it uh, special for the entire team at Nishkam TV. So again, uh, thank you very much, Virji. Vajju ka khalsa, Vajju ki fateh. Thank you, Ji. Vajju ka khalsa. Why would you give it to And we'll be in touch again, Vichy. Thank, thank you. Thank you. So again, uh, thank you, Amrit Pal. Uh, thanks for this opportunity. Uh, these kind of things doesn't happen every day. Uh, we are totally blessed uh, to interview uh, Ravi Singh Khalsa Ji. 
Uh, we can't uh, rest on our laurels. Uh, there's a lot of work uh, cut out in front of us and we need to collaborate with you guys and uh, and get blessings of uh, Ravi Singh Ji because he's been doing this seva from a long time. He understands and ups and downs and things which will work, the things which doesn't work. So we are always looking for his guidance and uh, working uh, closely with uh, Khalsa Ed USA too. So our kids would like to understand uh, more about Khalsa Ed USA, the programs you are doing it and how we can work with you, collaborate with you. So I will ask um, uh, Kiran uh, to start with the first question and then we'll go through the team. Okay, go ahead, uh, Kiran. All right, so Sister Gull, I'm Kiran. And just to start, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself and your role in Khalsa Aid? Great, well, Sister Gull, Kiran, um, again, I'm very impressed. Uh, I've said it before, I was very impressed. Harbalji, when I talked to you initially on the phone, I said I was very impressed and I knew Ravi Singh was going to be impressed too. Um, so clearly everyone's very impressed with your professionalism and everyone's organization. Um, I know from the back end, setting up these types of calls takes a lot of time and a lot of preparation. So what we're seeing is, you know, the execution, but I know from the back end, it's a lot of um, sleepless nights and preparation. So kudos to all of you guys. So Kieran, thanks again for your question. So a little bit about myself. My name is Amrit Balkor. I'm from New York. Um, I was born in the UK and then um, my family moved over here when I was about seven years old. So we've been living um, in the United States for some quite time. Um, you know, like I, I guess my role right now in Khalsa Aid is myself and Omar Singh, we help lead the entire Khalsa Aid USA. So the Khalsa Aid USA is one of the the newest chapters we have. So as Ravi Singh mentioned, we have um, the Khalsa Aid U UK, which is our headquarters. Then we have Khalsa Aid India, we have Khalsa Aid Australia, we have an Iraq team, um, and then we have Canada, and then USA is our most recent team. So the USA, I think we're, we're right now starting in our second year. So we're still pretty brand new. But I would say in the past two years, the progress that we've made is enormous. Um, we've done SEVA in over 13, 15 states, um, and uh, we're starting to develop teams. That takes a lot of time because, as you guys know, you know, getting a team together and then having a team lead and then coordinating SEVAs takes a lot of time. So um, my professional job is I'm in finance, so I um, work for the U.S. government. And then in my free time, which al almost seems like a second job, is helping run calls to AUSA. So it's a lot of work, you know, like we just um, started onboarding a few interns this year. And you guys, all, as you guys all know, it's really important to delegate, right? Like have teams, have a marketing team, have a social media team, have a communications team. So that's what we're starting to do. So we can start offboarding a lot of these heavy tasks to a lot of um, talented individuals. So I hope that answers your question. Oh yeah, thank you so much. I'm just gonna hand it off to Garlene in content. Um, so my question for you is what inspired you to join Khalsa Aid? Sure. Um, I think, you know, and, and I'll be quite frank, I think it's just my faith. Uh, I, I, ever since I was young, I can just remember I, the earliest memory I have is when I was three years old and my parents were taking me to the Gordora. They were teachers for the Khalsa school. And then I would go into the Lunger Hall with my grandmother and I was like, you know, cutting, peeling carrots or whatever you can do when you're a three-year-old, right? Um, and then just knowing that that's, that was ingrained into me, that I went to school and then on weekends we would go to the Gordora, my parents would do the Khalsa school seva, and it was just ingrained that you gave back to people. And then ever since then, when we moved to the United States, we were always giving back, right? Like my, uh, my grandfather was a firefighter, um, you know, always giving back to his community. Um, my parents always gave back however they could uh, to the local police station. Um, and then even the Gordora, right? Um, and then even throughout my life when I got in involved in school and college, I always made sure that I took out time to participate in committees and giving back because life is short um, and we don't wanna look back um, when we're older and think, okay, now is a good time to give back. I think there's never a better time to give back than starting young because the more you grow, the more you learn, and there's going to be different opportunities in your life that you're gonna get now that you may not get when you're later, right? So I think uh, it's, again, never too young to start, and I think it's just my faith that's enabled me and pushed me and motivated me 
to want to give back. Okay, thank you. Um, Ronick is going to speak now. My name is Ranak, and my question for you is, what type of uh, projects does Khalsa Aid do? Great. Vaigurji Ka Khalsa, Vaigurji Ki Fateh, Ranak. Thanks for the question. So a lot of the projects that we've been doing is, um, so we were talking about social media and the importance of social media. We have a, a handle at Khalsa Aid USA. So we have our Twitter um, Twitter channel, we have a Facebook uh, channel, and then we have an Instagram channel. So a lot of the seva that we do, we broadcast all on social media because I think it's important for people to know what we're doing across the United States. So if we look at the map of the United States, we're, we're enormous, right? And then demographically, we're so diverse. Geographically, we're so diverse. So a lot of the type of seva that we do is we try to take into consideration the communities that make up the fabric of the United States. So, um, for example, our team in um, uh, Wisconsin just happens to be located near a lot of uh, senior citizens. So a lot of the seva that they've been doing there, particularly during COVID, has been focused on senior homes, uh, people with disabilities who can't necessarily leave their homes and they need access to necessities, um, hygiene items, and food. So that's been their focus there. Um, in parts of New Jersey, we have, a t uh, we have a large indigenous community, which is the Ramapo Lenape Indians, right? So we've been working with them and, um, you know, we're talking about the farmer protests here, right? Um, they also natively um, to their culture have been farming and that's all they've known. So we helped um, actually uh, build out their farm in New Jersey so they can enable sustainable farming. So what they do is they have these natural methods of farming that they've carried out throughout generations. And so we're helping them so they can continue doing that. And then they can teach their future generation of the younger youth in their community and how to farm again. So that's one project we're doing. And then um, I would say in New York, for example, in the Queens community, there's a large demographic of Latino um, Americans. So we're working with a lot of the undocumented aliens who perhaps did not get access to food and supplies during COVID-19. And we showed up and we gave them what they needed. So this is just a little bit of what we're doing, but it kind of tells you, depending on where the seva is and what the terrain is and what the demographics is, we work with that community because we feel like that's a better approach than trying to ap apply a blanket approach cross across the entire country. Thank you. Now I'll pass it on to our marketing team lead, Harneet. Yes, I'm Harneet. And so you've kind of already touched upon this, but can you just go more into depth about what some of the work Khalsa Aid USA has done so far? Sure, Sestri Gal Harneet. Um, so yeah, I touched upon a little bit about the work that we do. Why don't I touch upon how we start to look for that work, right? So a lot of volunteers, when they reach out to us, they say, um, I'm from Texas, I'm from Arizona, I'm from California. Um, I want to volunteer for Khalsa Aid USA. So the first thing we ask them to say, uh, do, uh, do is we say, great, thanks for taking the initiative to reach out and realize um, that you want to volunteer and make a difference in your community. We ask them to look within their community. So if you live in Massachusetts, the first thing I would say is, okay, what city um, and county do you live in? So with, based on that, what has your experience been so far? Can you reach out to local shelters or pantries or organizations within your county and figure what is the current need, right? Because it's all about engaging in dialogue. Uh, we're a global humanitarian organization, but our approach has never been, okay, this is what we're going to do and we're gonna show up. It's more about working with the community, building a relationship, listening to them, and then showing up. Um, I can't tell you how many times that approach um, has worked for us. We've actually had organizations reach out to us and say, wow, not only did you listen to us, but you guys actually showed up. Because a lot of times organizations want to show up and ask, um, what's the issue? And okay, this is all we can deliver. So, you know, you're not really listening. So if someone says, um, you know, we have an issue with healthy food and then I show up bringing, um, I don't know if, if I show up bringing things that are not necessary, like just giving them a lot of hygiene items and they ask for food, that's not really listening, right? So I think our approach is 
working with the communities and then listening to them and understanding their issues and then coming to a solution to see how, do, how does our mission as Calsa Aid work and then how can we better um, provide them not only what they need, but build a long-term relationship. So going forward, um, when we have issues like the farmer protest, we can reach out to them to say, um, you know, we've been helping you guys out for a year. We've been providing support to your community. Here's an issue that's going on right, in, right now in India. Can you help support us? Can you tweet about it? Can you talk about it in social media? And a lot of the time, because you've built that relationship and you've built that trust, they trust you and they're like, yeah, well, we're going to support you. We're going to support this cause because you guys showed up for us and we're going to show up for you. Thank you so much. I think it's great that you really cater to like specific needs. And now I'll pass it over to our social media team lead, Meher Kaur. Satsugal, I'm Meher. My question for you is, how can anyone join the Sabre Projects here at Calsa Aid USA? Hi, Meher. Um, I think you are the one I think I emailed, correct, back? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so if anyone wants to join, like I mentioned before, we have um, an Instagram page and then we have a link tree and all the links are provi provided on there. So you can just go on our Instagram page, go on our Facebook page, go on our Twitter page. Um, if you look within our bio, there's a link. Uh, there's a option on there that is a volunteer form. We ask everyone to fill out that volunteer form. And now we have interns who are monitoring uh, that form. So when you fill it out, you'll hear back from our volunteer team. They'll talk to you a little bit about, um, you know, how you heard about Calsa Aid, what you're interested in, and then there's an onboarding process. And then we add you onto our teams. But again, it's very right now in its infancy. So I think the pros with being a young organization like Calsa Aid USA is that we're open to anything and everything. So if you have an idea, or if there's a group that you're working with at your high school, uh, bring that idea and there's more most likely tell us why you think it's a great idea how it would be a good fit for Calsa in USA we'd love to hear it and we probably would let you lead that project cool sounds interesting maybe I will take you up on that <laughs> yeah uh, again uh, thank you very much so any any last words you have for Nishkam TV uh, for our students uh, no I, I'm actually very very impressed with what work you guys have done keep it up um as uh, as we mentioned as ravi singh's mentioned we're really looking forward to continuing our relationship with you guys so if there's any topics or um issues that you guys want to talk about i uh, want to partner up with you have my email address now um you know harbal g you have my number too um feel free to reach out to us if there's anything uh we'd love to because you guys have a great team you guys are very talented you guys have the skill set so um, I'm more than happy to hear a lot of the ideas that you guys have and uh, good luck. You guys don't need it. You guys are pretty well set. So I'm very impressed and thank you so much today for organizing this and um, all your hard work. Uh, it definitely shows. Again, thank you very much. And thank you very much for watching uh, our today's program, Meet the Leader. Yeah.